There is so much that we don't even realize in this story that has to do with the predestined plan for Jesus and his foresight and his foreknowledge. I I think sometimes we forget that everything Jesus does is with intention. And so we have to read these passages of scripture knowing that there was intention behind everything that Jesus did, that he said, the actions he did. And so let's read this passage today with this perspective, knowing that everything is intentional. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like he's completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear his voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus Podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, with summer coming up before we know it, I wanted to share with you about one of our partners, Kids Across America Camps. For over 30 years, their mission has remained the same, to build Christian leaders by encouraging, equipping, and empowering urban youth and their mentors through camp and education. In both my own life and in the life of my daughters, camp has been a life-changing, future-altering experience. For many kids, this is not only the highlight of the summer, but their lives. Children and teens dedicate their lives to Christ. Young believers put down deep roots in the faith, the food, the games, the sports, the friends, it's so much fun. With Kids Across America camps, many of the kids and teens they serve come from under-resourced communities. Finances are often the only thing standing between them and camp, between them and an extraordinary first meeting with Jesus. What happens if they don't get to come? Well, more of the same. Many of these kids will spend all summer in environments that will keep them from being exposed to the love of Jesus and potentially exposing them to more violence, more crime, more alcohol and drugs. But if you send them to camp, everything can change. You can give towards camper scholarships that can truly make an eternal impact in the life of one of these students. Every gift counts. Even small gifts can be paired together to help sponsor a child to go to camp. But please don't wait. Only a few weeks remain before camp starts, and we want every deserving child and teen to be able to attend. Go online to give K-A-A camps, that's camps with a K, dot org forward slash hearing Jesus. That's K-A-A-K-A-M- ps.org forward slash hearing Jesus. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Today we are going through day four of Mary of Bethany. This is the week that we study Mary from the She Hears Bible study, and this is just a little bit of the devotional content that is pulled from that study. So we are again in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. When Mary took out a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she would save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. So yesterday we talked about this concept of anointing. And when I was young, my grandmother had this collection of very rare and expensive old perfume bottles. She had collected them over the years, and many were antique. Some were French, some were Italian, but they were beautiful. We were not supposed to touch them, but of course I did. And I used to open them up so I could smell them. And one time... I accidentally spilled one and I I didn't want to get in trouble. So I filled it up with water and I was just hoping that she didn't notice, but she did. And I I just remember these bottles 
as part of my childhood, and I would watch as she would painstakingly clean the dust off of each sometimes tiny bottle. They were very valuable, and they were precious to her, really. And so she would clean them, and then she'd put them back on this mirrored tray that she had on the counter in the bathroom, and she always reminded me not to touch them. And no sooner had she left the room, I was already picking up the pink one. (laughs) I just had to smell it. I was careful not to spill it, but even holding that little lid in my hands, it was enough. And the fragrance from that bottle hung in the air. So I would wash my hands very carefully, two times even, with warm water and soap, and then I would go downstairs for lunch. And as soon as I did, I was caught. Because the aroma of the, that perfume was so strong, it gave me away. So today, we're going to consider some of the consequences of the anointing that Mary performed. And that may sound odd, but let me make the connection. Let's look at the broader picture of what was happening. Remember, what kind of jar was the oil that Mary was was using that had, had the perfume in it? It was an alabaster jar. And sometimes the translations will say box, but in the original text, that word meant like a flask or a long necked jar. And so the first time I saw alabaster, it surprised me. It was dense and hard. It kind of felt like marble. And I have this alabaster ball that I keep on my desk, and it reminds me of this story, actually. But I like to pick it up and hold it, and it's heavy and dense. So the way that those jars were made, she would need to break the jar in order to access the oil. Because once it was opened, it would have to be used. There was no saving some of it for another time. That aspect is something that really speaks to me. There's this sense that God has given us this special gift to be used only on Jesus. And what does that look like in our lives? How is that relevant? One of the things that is my hope as you start to see these stories of these women is your own story. The things that we see and learn about how Jesus interacted with them shows us how he longs to interact with us. I am so thankful for the gift of God's word. All right, let's keep going. So when we're talking about anointing, specifically an anointing of a king, remember we talked about this this week, the king would receive the anointing as part of the coronation ceremony instead of a crown. So the oil was used to anoint these Hebrew kings And it would be precious oil, expensive, and used specifically for the purpose of giving off an aroma, almost like an aroma of holiness, so that the people around them would sense this special fragrance, and it would signify royalty to them. In fact, kings were judged not only by how they looked in their royal clothing, but by how they smelled in their royal aroma. The clothes that they wore would even be fragranced so that their aroma could be recognized during special occasions. In the study itself, we go through lots of examples of where we see this throughout Scripture, both in the Old Testament and the New. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I love it. It says that God uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Him everywhere. So our obedience to sit at His feet, to be His disciple, to learn from Him— And then as we pour out our gifting back to the feet of Jesus, that's what enables us to spread the aroma of his fragrance in a way that other people can see who Jesus is, the king. Because remember what's coming the next day after this scene of Jesus being anointed. If you read the rest of John 12, you can see some new insights that might be helpful. But let me just summarize. Jesus would be headed into Jerusalem. And remember what the people there would declare him? The king of Israel. So this is like what we would consider Palm Sunday, the the story that we talk about as he heads into Jerusalem. So isn't it interesting that this impromptu processional with people declaring Jesus as king, it includes the royal aroma of a king as he walked past them. And so the oil that Mary anointed Jesus with was so fragrant that it likely would have stayed with him a while and it would linger in a way that others would smell it wherever he went. 
So as he entered Jerusalem on a donkey, they would smell this royal aroma. In the garden, during his arrest, when he was before Pilate, when he was beaten and stripped naked, and when he was nailed to a cross, the anointed king with the aroma of a king who was set apart to redeem his people through sacrifice, even as he hung on a cross, others would sense who he was, even if they didn't quite understand it yet. So just as that aroma clung to him, it now clings to us. So this fragrance of Jesus, his royalty, has now been transferred to us as his children. We are daughters of the king. The word says that because of Jesus, we are now an aroma to God. The aroma of Christ, Christos, the anointed king. So no longer do we bear the stench of our own sin. Instead, we bear the fragrance of royalty. I'm so thankful for the way that Jesus transforms us and then he uses us for his glory. Because remember, there's nothing wasted in the kingdom. God, help us to remember that because of you, because of your sacrifice on the cross, that we no longer bear the stench of our sin, but instead we bear the aroma of Christ, Christos, the anointed king, the fragrance of royalty. God, help us to walk in the authority that we have as daughters of the king. Help us to remember that no matter what it was, that your love covers us because of the cross, because of the redemption, because of the resurrection. God, we thank you that sometimes, even in the midst of our daily hurried lives, when we forget that there's nothing that we have to do to earn this, but that it is a gift from you. God, I pray that your presence would be real in the lives of my friends today, so much so that they would sense the aroma of the king as they go throughout their day. God, we thank you for the treasure that is your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey friends, before you go, real quick, I want to let you know that we have extra resources at shehears.org to help you grow in your faith. Whether you're looking for a new Bible or Bible tabs or additional Bible studies, I've curated a selection of some of my favorite things that I think you're really going to love. So with Easter coming up, I want to offer you 10% on the store. If you go to shehears.org and go to our shop on the resources page, you can enter the code HEARINGJESUS for 10% off between now and Easter. Happy shopping! Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you in your walk with God, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, bonus content, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Know that you are so loved. Keep going.